Finally, 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 the Minnesota DNR has allowed cast nets to be used in Minnesota. They have legalized it, and I couldn't be happier. It's going to be so nice to use cast nets on the St. Croix River in the fall for gizzard shad. Uh, the sturgeon love them, and uh, I missed it. That last year I missed it. So what happened was back in 2015, uh, the catfish work group that I'm part of, uh, we had some discussions with the DNR, and uh, we got them to allow cast nets on certain parts of the metro rivers and only for gizzard shad. Uh, mostly wanted, we wanted to use them for sturgeon fishing, uh, but also catfish and, and just about every other game fish love to eat shad. So um, we wanted to try and utilize these, these bait fish because there's really no other way to get them um, because they're uh, plankton eaters. So uh, a cast net is, is about the best way to get them and about the only way to get them. You can, when they get bigger, you can catch them with a rod and reel, but that's pretty tough. So at any rate, uh, back, like I said, back in 2015, they uh, did a trial period and had some people sign up and we collected some data for them and uh, they decided, hey, it's, it's working pretty good. We're going to go ahead and, and make this uh, uh, completely legal uh, permanently. So what happened was it was a sunset clause the way they wrote it the first time. So it expired. So they, it, they pushed it through the legislature last year and uh, they said everything's fine. It'll go through. Uh, well, what happened is it got put on this omnibus bill uh, with a bunch of other things, and the governor vetoed it. So now we're out again. It, we, we couldn't have cast nets all of last year. And uh, like I said, I really missed it. It was a bummer not to be able to use them. Uh, so circled back around this year for the legislature, and uh, they put it back in again. And it passed. Finally it passed. Um, what a relief. It's a long time coming. Uh, so there are a bunch of restrictions with the cast nets, so don't just think you can go out and buy a cast net and throw it anywhere in Minnesota. Uh, it's not going to happen that way. It's not going to be legal. Uh, so let me go through the, the, uh, the regulations uh, and the stipulations here real quick. Uh, first of all is the size of the net. The size of the net is limited to uh, five foot radius maximum, uh, which is a step up. Before they had a three and a half foot radius maximum, and we... Uh, we asked them to increase that to five feet and they did that. So I'm glad they did that because a five foot net is so much better than a three and a half foot net. And remember that is radius. Uh, so when they sell it, it's usually radius, but don't be confused with diameter and radius. Uh, radius is half diameter. So the five foot radius net is gonna be 10 feet diameter. So when you go to order one, uh, don't order one bigger than five feet radius or 10 feet diameter. Uh, the mesh size is three eighths to five eighths inch. Um, the bigger mesh sizes for bigger fish, I think three eighths is going to be fine for the, the fish we're targeting here, the gizzard shed. So the net I have is three eighths inch. Uh, the material has to be monofilament. Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, you have to get it tagged. I'll go through the tagging process here uh, shortly. I'll just go through the uh, boundaries as well. Now the boundaries is kind of limited to the metro area. Uh, so it's the Minnesota River from Granite Falls down, which isn't really metro, but uh, that's uh, a bit west, southwest of the metro. But so Minnesota River Granite Falls down, Mississippi River from St. Anthony Falls down, and St. Croix River from Taylor's Falls down. So from all those dams downstream, you can use the cast net for gizzard shad only. Uh, if you're catching other things other than gizzard shad, you have to throw them back. This is only for gizzard shad, and you will have to fill out a report every year. At the end of the year, you have to report you know, your bycatch. Uh, just collecting data for the DNR and make sure we're not uh, catching species we're not supposed to be catching with these nets. Uh, and they're going to be a stickler on that, so if you don't turn in your, your annual report, they're not going to issue a permit for the next year, so keep that in mind. Um, so the tagging process, in the description on this video below, I'll put a link to the, to the DNR site where you have to go, and there'll be an application form you have to fill out. And there'll also be an online AIS course you have to take, which is a yearly course. It's about a 45 minute, uh, just watch some videos, answer some questions, uh, learning about AIS. Uh, yes, it's a lot of restrictions and a lot of stipulations. However, when you get all that done, you can throw a cast net and you can catch gizzard shed. And let me tell you, gizzard shed are a great bait on all three of the rivers. Uh, and I'm glad I'm going to be able to use them, especially, like I said, sturgeon fishing. Um, so. I'll circle around here and I'll show you the cast net. I'll uh, just throw it a couple times, show you how I do it. Um, it's not terribly 
complicated, but it is a little tricky. Uh, there's some things you can do to make that net open up a little bit better. Uh, there's thousands of video on YouTube, so just don't think the way I do it is the right way. Just scour YouTube and you'll find something that works well for you. Just get the net and practice out in your yard or whatever. Uh, the net I bought is a Betts Tizak. In the description, I'll put a link to that cast net um, through Amazon. It's, uh, I want to say 30 or 40 bucks, uh, but this is the five foot version. You can get the smaller version, but if you can teach yourself to throw a five foot radius net, you'll probably want to do that. The three and a half is going to be much easier to throw, but uh, I recommend five, the five footer. Um, again, link in the description to that net. All right, so let's get on the bow here and I'll throw the net a couple times and just go through that real quick. I'd, I don't expect to catch anything here. I'm, I'm in a backwater creek actually right now off the Minnesota River. We're currently flooded. Imagine that, it's been flooded all year, terrible year. Um, but yeah, I, I don't expect to catch anything. I'm just gonna throw the net a couple times. And uh, I was hoping maybe I'd catch a fish on my, uh, my rod here. I brought out some frozen bait. I figured as long as I was gonna be out here doing this video, uh, maybe I'd catch a fish, but uh, I haven't got anything yet, so. All right, so uh, I don't have the best camera angle here, but I'm gonna try to show you the best I can here with what I got. So. Um, the first thing you want to make sure you do is, is put this loop over your wrist, make sure it's locked in. You don't want to throw that, uh, throw the whole thing and lose the rope. So put that around your wrist. And some I've seen people uh, actually lock this, you know, pull it through and then lock it like that. I'll show that again here real quick. Um, instead of just using the loop, you can uh, pull it through and then lock it in and then, uh, you won't lose it for sure. All right, so then you wanna just make loops. Just keep making nice, clean loops until you get to the end here. Now this is the, this little plastic piece is called the horn. And this is where they also attach the, uh, the AIS tag. Um, each each uh, fisheries station might do that differently, but uh, that's where I put it, so. Uh, so once you get to this horn, you put your hand over the horn and grab it like that, okay? Now, go about halfway down, lift that up, and then grab it with the same hand you grab the horn with. Then kind of go through this and make sure there's no tangles. And from your hand straight down here, Grab this leader line and just put it over your hand like that. And then one more time, follow this line down right here. And make sure it's not tangled, like I said. Like so. And now, I'm just going to throw this and kind of you want to you want to kind of make a rotation as you throw. So just throw it easy and it opens right up. Now you can't see that from this angle. So I'll put the camera out on the water so you can see how the throw lands the next time. And then when you bring it in, make sure you, you bring in loops like that, just like we did the first time. And hopefully there'll be fish trapped in here and then you can just pull a horn and that releases all the fish. All right, so there you go. Pretty easy once you get the hang of it. Uh, it takes a little practice, but uh, pick up that net and just go out in your yard and, and throw it a bunch of times. You'll get the hang of it. Like I said, just scour uh, YouTube. There's a bunch of videos. Uh, I'll show you what to do. Uh, you'll find a way that works good for you. Obviously there's no fish here. Uh, I've been here 20 minutes and I haven't got a bite as far as I can tell. So it'd be kind of nice to throw more than one rod out. You hear that Minnesota? Man, we could use uh, more than one line. It sure would make fishing a little more fun. At any rate, uh, enough with that. Uh, I'm gonna work my way back to the ramp here and try a few more spots. If I find a fish, I'll throw the camera on. You can see me catch fish. Uh, 
Otherwise, have yourself a great week. If anyone's looking to book a catfish trip, channel, flathead, uh, or even a sturgeon trip here in the, in the fall, uh, I run a guide service here. It's called Three Rivers Fishing Adventures, www.threeriversfishingadventures.com. You can look me up at Facebook as well. Uh, I got a Facebook page. Other than that, uh, take care.